हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर महेश मोहिते पीडियाट्रिशियन पीडियाट्रिक एंड न्यूनेटल इंटेंसिविस्ट फ्रॉम पनवेल महाराष्ट्र वी आर इन टू यट अनदर स्टीयर वीडियो एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ अ क्लिनिकल एग्जामिनेशन दैट इज पल्स पल्स हाउ इट गिव्स यू अ लॉट ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन इनफैक्ट इन अ डे टू डे कन्वर्सेशन वी यूज ऑल ऑफ एस यूज अ फ्रेज someone has got pulse of the subject to indicate the mastery of one of the uh, one on the subject this is the importance of world pulse in a clinical medicine it represents cardiac status representing the whole body status and we need to understand some physiology of the pulse before going into details of that the palpable pulse is created by blood pushed into circulation by heart and it is formed by it it essential component of that is it should be adequate volume of blood the heart should be pumping it well it should be properly distributed and it should meet the tissue demands of oxygen and nutrient abnormal pulse represent challenges or failure at any of these levels now the pulse is examined at the peripheral location at the radials or dorsalis pedis and posterior tibial or at a central level uh, location where it could be brachial femoral internal carotids etc absent peripheral pulses with present central pulses is shock and absence of both central as well as peripheral is shock which is a pre terminal event there are multiple characters of pulse when we discuss or describe pulse rate the volume the central peripheral pulse correlation the rhythm the apex pulse deficit and radio femoral delay <coughs> let us discuss one by one of those so pulse rate in pediatric patient normal pulse rate varies according to so we have certain cutoffs of pulse rate the smaller the baby higher the natural normal pulse rate bigger the baby lesser the pulse rate so in adult you know it's around 72 to 80 in a neonate it could be up to 100 to 140 in a pediatric patient between 80 to 100 somewhere so whenever there is any challenge to body demands whether physical or physiological the pulse will rate will increase and this is a primary response of a pediatric patient because there are hardly any inotropic reserves in the patient we say this in adult when there is such increase in the demand the pulse response first response is increased stroke volume and later on the heart rate will increase now you can have increased pulse rate that is tachycardia which may be seen in physiological activity like running crying shouting any increased activity it could be because of anxious moment any anxiety or it could be increased due to increased tissue demands like infection inflammation metabolic uh, kind of a demands like thyroid toxicosis which is not very common common being infection inflammation that we see and rarely it could be tachyarrhythmias there could be decreased pulse rate which is bradycardia which can be again because of physiological in a resting sleeping state it could be bradycardia it could be very kind of a active athlete who may have his normal pulse rate ranging between 50 to 60 it could be bradyarrhythmia which is pathological in a terminal hypoxia or any terminal event you may have bradycardia second part that is pulse volume which represents the pulse pressure that is systolic minus diastolic pressure now i recall one child was brought to me in a gasping state and his pulse was not palpable i told the pg to give a small bolus of fluid pulse still not palpable i told them to take a blood pressure which was 160 by 140 so this pulse pressure which is systolic minus diastolic represents or surrogates how much pulse you are palpating so don't just go by palpation always make it a point at least at within first or few minutes of your critical kind of a child record the blood pressure and find out the pulse pressure which is a surrogate of the what you feel on a radial or a distal pulses high volume pulse denotes a wide pulse pressure which we classically call as bounding pulse so weaker pulse is suggestive of narrow pulse pressure which may be seen in hypovolemia cardiogenic shock obstructive and few septic shocks hypertension with narrow pulse pressure also will come with weak pulse and a bounding pulse which is a wide pulse pressure which will be seen in all hyperdynamic circulation like anemia ductus large vsd sometimes thyroid toxicosis and high volume pulse can be a marker of early warm shock which is again a wide pulse pressure shock the central peripheral pulse is the next thing which we correlate when we discuss about pulse when the 
Peripheral pulses are weak and central pulses are normal. It is an early marker of shock and when both are weak, that is a marker of a terminal event, a severe shock. Next comes rhythm. The arrhythmic pulse is not very common. Usually they are regular tachyarrhythmias like supraventricular tachycardia or ventricular tachycardia or it could be bradyarrhythmias again like a terminal event of hypoxia or it could be sinus bradycardia or complete heart block. Rarely you may see irregular rhythm due to various conduction pathology and that need urgent evaluation and management. Radio femoral delay is a misnomer. So it actually means a femoral pulses are weaker than radial indicating coarctation of aorta and this needs to be confirmed by upper and lower limb blood pressures. If the lower limb systolic blood pressure is more than 20 millimeters lesser than the upper limb systolic blood pressure that we correlate with a radio femoral delay and it's a marker of aortic obstruction. Apex pulse deficit, it is also very rare abnormality. It indicates cardiac systole not creating adequate pulse suggesting arrhythmia. For recording, you have to check the heart rate by stethoscope on a pericardium for one minute and same time count radial pulse rate. The difference is number of beats not transmitted which is actually a apex pulse deficit. There are some few pitfalls in a pulse assessment. There could be multiple confounders when we interpret our pulse. It could be physical state, the child is sleepy which will give rise to bradycardia, activity, anxiety will increase tachycardia, multiple medications in a hospitalized or even in a kind of OPD patient that will also change the pulse rate. So like vasoactive agent in the ICU will give rise to tachycardia, beta blockers will give rise to bradycardia, disease states like fever, systemic inflammatory response, system dysfunction etc. will give rise to again a tachycardia. Still the pulse rate or heart rate is reasonable good surrogate of overall well-being of the patient. Especially when I am seeing a critical child, uh, in a, suppose in ICU I am moving or in the ward, I try to remember the given heart rate at that point of time and next morning I come and I see suddenly a significant, a significant heart rate, I see to it that I need to know the cause of the increased heart rate. So the nurse may say that sir I have just fed the baby or the child may be moving or whatever. So that could be physiological or maybe some new inotrop is added that could be giving rise to tachycardia and if not then I may be missing some underlying subclinical inflammation or infection which need to be evaluated. So in a sick child trends of pulse rate can guide you regarding improvement or deterioration of a patient. So friends to summarize know the normal pulse rate of the uh, according to appropriate to the age. So as I said in the neonate it could be up to 140 uh, or 120 to 140. In a preterm baby, we consider up to 180, maybe normal if rest of the parameters are normal. But as the age progresses, the physiological rate goes down. In an adult, it could be around 60 to 70 to 80. In a very high profile athlete, uh, it could be as low as 40 to 50. Understand the contribution of physiological changes to changing pulse rate. Interpret changes in pulse on background of multiple confounders and in the sick child trend of pulse rate provides reliable information about progress of the disease. So again know the pulse of the patient that means know how it's performing based on the pulse rate which is your first introduction to pulse to the patient's well-being or a disease and then that need to be monitored. So thank you very much. And the next talk is going to be on assess breathing by vision, hearing and touch which will be given by Dr. Rajesh Chokhani. Thank you very much.